Hey, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm with Steve. We are in New Digs in San Rafael, California, a little closer to my house, a little not quite as far as Petaluma, a little far for you still. <laughs> yeah, well this is their new digs and it's pretty much a warehouse right now. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah so we're, um, this is the first time they're shooting here, so um, it's kind of shaking everything out, but it seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. Um, so why don't we go into what you got, because you got a very seasonal uh, tip for us here right. today. So I wanted to do a cinemagraph, which is a kind of a visual hybrid of a motion and a photograph. So it's kind of like a photograph, but some of it moves. Yeah. So yeah, those are fun. Really They're a lot fun. of fun. So I yeah. thought I'd do one. Well, let me just show you what I did. Great. Okay, Let's so, take a look. So I have this uh, stock footage or stock photo of this, uh, this cute little girl in a Christmas tableau, and uh, she's holding a snow globe. And if I hit the space bar, <laughs> the, uh, the snow inside the globe is moving. So it's a photograph, but it has this animated element that really kind of brings it to life. Yeah, very exactly. Nice. It's very nice. So I think before we actually do the compositing here, let's jump into motion and look at how I got the snow. How so you make it. the snow. So you use motion to make the snow, yeah. and then you add it in Final Cut. Yeah. I okay. mean, I could have done all of this in motion, but I like, I like working in Final yeah, Cut. Okay. I got it. Okay. And it, you might. That's well, probably what you would do if it's part of an edit. Right, so that makes yep. sense. Yeah, like a graphics person might hand you the snow and you put it in, in okay. your edit editor. Okay, so here's essentially an empty project. I've already set it up for the frame rate and resolution that I plan on working in, and I needed some snow, so what I did was I went to the library tab of the inspector, and they have, mm -hmm. they have all kind of effects particles, <laughs> generators and stuff, lineup library, all kind and of. I needed some snow, so I just typed in snow in the down search field. Down in the field. search field, down. Right. okay. And there's different kinds of snow. There's snow, snow, there's a blizzard, and then there's this flurry. Okay, and if you select any one of those, you get a little preview up top. Yeah, yeah, if you select it, you'll get a little preview. I, I can't really see it because the snow particles it's are small. It's kind of hard to right. see. Yeah, yeah you can go. see it there. So I, I like the flurry was the closest to what I wanted in terms okay. of the snow globe. So I just grab this and drop it into this uh, pane right here. Uh -huh. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and press the space bar to see what, it, what the default looks like. And um, it it's not quite what I want. Yeah, it doesn't really look like a glow. It looks like you're lying down, looking up at the snow coming down front to you out of the sky. With your mouth open when catching snowflakes yeah. on your tongue. On your tongue, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but you were able to start with this and end up with something that looked like snow being shaken in a snow globe. Yeah, so what I did was, I was stuck. I added, I did some things, but I, you know, I was starting going down a path I didn't like. So I said, Mark, help me out here. Help me make this into more of a snow globe. Well, you got like 90% of the way. Right. So I'm going to just hit uh, command tilde to jump over to the, the finished one. And I'll, I'll play still it. It's so still in motion. It's still in motion. different motion project. Yeah. And you, you can have different projects open in motion, which is nice. So here's the here's the finished one, which is much more like the snow. You got particles moving in all directions, like someone shook it up. By the way, it's playing at 11 frames per second because there's a lot of going on here. So actually, the real thing plays a little faster than this. Yes. But the motion you can see is exactly what you want with. Oh yeah. Stuff I'm, moving in every different direction. I'm elated with this, <laughs> yeah. with this motion here. Okay. All right. So how did we get there? Okay. Well, a couple of things. The snow flurry itself, the the stock snow flurry, already had some random motion, but I added some gravity and I added an, an edge collision. Edge collision, so that they would, when they left the screen, they would bounce on the edges of the screen and come back yeah, in again. Yeah, bounce. Right. Uh -huh. But I was unhappy with that because they were bouncing on the edges and coming back in. It seemed so you could see them bounce. I didn't want to see them bounce. Yeah. I wanted them to kind of like go outside and then come back in. Okay. Right. So. This is where you really helped me out. So, like for for example, edge collision, we did some things in here. I think what what, what I think the main thing is in the width and height of the edge, edge right collision, here, yeah. which by default is set to your frame size. Right. So you actually see things bounce on the walls, right. the, you know, quote walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we expanded that, so they go off the screen, then they bounce back in. Right. To look a little more realistic. I think there's something else I did in terms of the actual gen um, particle emitter itself. I switched the shape. To a sphere. That's okay, the other so thing I did. It's a 3D particle emitter. Was it already 3D? It was already 3D. Okay, but you made the shape a sphere, so the particles sphere. are appearing from anywhere in that sphere. That's exactly right. Okay, okay. So that that was helpful. Um, and then the edge collision. That, there were some things that well, we, were, we just talked about that. Let's let's uh, talk about the uh, cells themselves. We did some things with yeah. The individual. So this, it's interesting that this emitter has two separate cells. So it, there's two different types of snowflake in there. And that's what you'd want because it, you, it gets a sense of depth. You got snowflakes in the front, snowflakes in the back, yeah, and they're shaped differently. They're shaped differently. I think it makes it better or re more realistic. So this is the same uh, uh, cell um, object, but. It's got different parameters, although here, like, I'm selecting on it with the birth rates, one thing, and the, the randomness, and we, you had him cranked up the original, the, yeah, the, the number. Yeah, the initial number was set to zero, because you're just seeing them being born, but we wanted to start with a bunch already in the globe, right. so we cranked up the initial number, and maybe a few other things, maybe the birth rate. Yeah. A lot of this is just playing with just it, playing to kind of get, yeah. get it where you want. 
Right, and so there might be some different, different settings, like this has got a higher initial number of this particular cell. Mm -hmm. So the, the bottom line is we just kept tweaking with it until it looked right. Look you know, mm -hmm. you know well, I, have, I have a general saying, you know, if it looks good, it is good, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so how, what do you so, do now? So what we did now is I press Command E and I jump into the export, export. dialog mm -hmm. and notice I set for ProRes LT. You, you may think, I, I need to have an alpha channel. You need so I transparency, can right? You, yeah, you may think that, and, and you would write, normally rightly think that, and you choose either 444 or XQ for that, but that makes a really big file size. Don't really need to, you can use LT. Proxy's pushing a little bit, I'd say LT, but the yeah. thing is, is that because this is black and white image, you can use a, a, a compositing mode, a blend mode. To knock the black out. To knock out. the black out, okay. and you get a smaller size. So I'm not going to export this, because I've already done that. So I'm going to go ahead and click, click, click cancel, and I'm going to jump back into Final Cut Pro. Right, so here's the imported snow flurry, the one that, that you just, exported that from I exported, motion. right. Okay. And notice I, in the range, I didn't include the beginning of the clip because it, it takes, it, it, takes look, it doesn't look right, it just takes a minute to kind of like, they birth themselves. Yeah, right? don't want that part. Don't want that part. So I really want to start with the universe already in existence. Okay. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to grab that range and I'm going to just drag that right there and just composite it over the top. Okay? So I make it as a connected clip over, to, over the over, photograph. Over uh -huh. the photograph. Next thing I want to do is resize it. So I'm going to hit shift T to bring up the uh, transform controls, and I'm going to go ahead and just resize this thing and make it just slightly larger than the snow globe itself. I, yeah. I realize it's a rectangle, but I just want to get the general okay. shape. Great, the, you're done. It looks great. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Exactly. <laughs> so now I want to do is I want to add. I essentially want to mask out yes. the shape. So now we got masks here. The simplest one to use for me is a sort of, uh, shape mask, just kind of yeah. just. I just love the masking tools now in Boom. Final Cut. I mean, it's stuff you had to do in motion right. before, but you can all do this right in Final Cut. Look, it's like a television, so it's, like 50, it's like a twilight zone. Yeah. Inch or so. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the um, transform because this is a little gotcha. If you have the transform on, you don't see the controls for the mask. So yeah. you want to make sure you it's turn one those or off. The other. Right. And because this, is, uh, this globe is pretty much a sphere, you want to go in and reshape uh, shape this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag and kind of make this more of a, a circle, kind of position this a little bit. Now here's something you taught me. I didn't even know this. If you hold down the option key, you can you can adjust one side. Whereas if you don't hold the option key, it adjusts both sides at the same, same top time. And top and bottom, yeah. right. So option key, I can just kind of tweak the top, you know, tweak the bottom a little bit with the option key. I just, there's a great thing um, that you showed me how to do. So just go ahead and try, try to get this inside. By the way, the, there's two um, little red uh, circumference Little circles, Air circles right. Uh -huh. The outer one is feathering. So what I try to do is try to get the the inner red line on the inside of the globe and just a little bit of feathering on the, on the outside. You so just don't want a hard, real hard, hard edge, edge to that exactly, snow. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, that's you know, it's good enough. Okay. For now. <laughs> so now what? So now we want to blend it with the background. That so we want to knock all that black out and keep the white. That's right. So okay. we're going to go ahead and go into the inspector, go down to the compositing mode section. And let's see, let's see, it's blend mode's normal. We're going to want to choose add. Add. Now it's just so, math is being applied yeah. here. So black is zero, zero plus whatever is. Is whatever. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right, so boom, there, just knocked it out. So now you've got the snow and you've, you've basically created transparency with a blend mode. Right, and now I'm going to turn off the masking control so we can see the final effect. And by the way, I got clip skimming on. This is, you could really see. You know how cool clip skimming is. You can skim to eat, and, and just, just that see just clip. that layer. I love that. No other NLE has that mm -hmm. capability, and I just I just love it. So I'm going to go ahead and press the. Uh, I'm going to hit. Actually, I want to clean up my interface here because I don't like a messy room. There we go. Hit space bar, and there and is the final. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just it's just it looks great. It's great. Yeah, there's, awesome. There's, so some, some nice tips there because you're combining motion in Final Cut mm -hmm. using a preset emitter to get started. You don't have to create it from scratch right. and just tweaking it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, using a blend mode and a mask. A lot of powerful separate tools come together to create a nice little look there. So excellent, right. Steve. Thanks. Yeah. Hope you guys found that useful. If you did, we got lots more of this stuff. Every week we're here multiple times. Mac Break Studio, Under Fives. Check us out at rippletraining.com and on all your social media venues. Um, we'll be back next week. Thank you for watching Mac Break Studio. And Happy holidays.